Shalom Yashala, Brakate Yahweh, Brakate Yahweh Shai. I want to give our praises to Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakudash. I want to give double honors and salutations to our apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, GMS. I want to give honors and salutations to all the men that are pushing this truth and laboring within this tabernacle, all right, helping to build the holy tabernacle of David, you know, which is rising, you know, as in the days of old. All right, through the Spirit, I want to give uh, salutations and, and peace and blessings to the household of faith, the sincere, hopeful elect tuning in. Shalom to you. Just want to do a quick lesson going into Revelation 16, chapter, verse 13, dealing with those three unclean spirits. And just, uh, you know, Lord willing to be a little quick breakdown and, and be edifying. But you see on this image, the Trinity of a globalist stronghold, the city of London, Vatican City, and Washington, D.C., so let's go ahead and get straight to it. We'll start at Revelation 16, verse 12. And it reads, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And the dragon initially was the Roman Empire. But it's also interchangeable with this current beast system today. All right, because, and I say it's interchangeable because if you go to Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So this is going into the, the fall of Esau when Yahweh Shai and the holy angels uh, come back, you know. Uh, pursuant to Matthew 24, just to back that up, Matthew 24 and uh, verse 30, and then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven, right? And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So Yahweh Shah is coming, but he's not coming alone. He's coming with the angels. And uh, one of the angels being the chief angel, Mayaka Allah, or Michael. So it says they fought against the dragon. So that tells you that the dragon is still here today. And Revelation 13 and what's that, uh, 14 or 13 tell you how the 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 the, the beast had a deadly wound and yet was healed, which is symbolic of you know, this this uh, beast system, this Roman Empire, you know, falling for a bit and coming back. So it came back today via uh, what's known as the European Union, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in the United States. You know, this is uh, NATO and the EU. So, you know, the beast, you know, this system, same thing, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And we're going to get into that, too. So... So let's start in order. So the city of London, all right, that's one of the unclean spirits, which London represents the uh, financial hub, all right? So how, this is from Investopedia, how London became the world's financial hub. The UK is the highest net exporter of financial services. And London, this came out this year, by the way. This ain't even old news. It says, with its convenient time zone, Use of English and featherlight regulations is the world's financial capital. You see that? So London is the world's financial capital. Various cities, including Venice and Amsterdam, have held and lost uh, the title through history. All right. And then it just goes into a little bit of history. But I think you get it. What's the next one? The Vatican City. So... Let's deal with religion and the false prophet. So, ultimately, the, the Roman Catholic Church is what we're dealing with. But there's many, though. It's just Roman. the Roman Catholic Church is, is number one. You see, it's the largest Christian denomination. This is from Newsmax.com. As the world's largest... Hold on, let me see here. Let's read, let's read into it. For over 2,000 years, since the birth, life, death, and believed resurrection of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Christianity has been the largest major religion in the world. You see that? So we just addressed the largest financial um, center in the world. Now we're addressing the largest major religion in the world. 
and approximated 2.1 billion believers identify with Christianity around the globe, and more than 78% of adults in the United States do the same. But Christianity is more than just one set of beliefs and principles. In fact, it is made up of many den denominations with varying doctrines ranging from Catholics to, Quak to Quakers. Here are 11 branches of Christianity's denominations. Number one, Roman Catholic. As the largest Christianities as the largest of Christianity's denominations with over a million followers around the world. It's also one of the oldest to split off from what was originally referred to as Christianity shortly after the time of Christ. So you also got the Orthodox Church, the, the Anglican, the Anabaptist, the Baptist, the Lutheran, the Pentecostal, the Methodist, Pre Presbyterian, non-denominational Church of Christ, and the United Church of Christ. All right, all of this falls under the umbrella, man. These are all branch offs of the false prophet, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, and their chief uh, false prophet, which is the Pope. And this is this is him uh, a week ago uh, from endtimeheadlines.org. Pope warns he has seen omens of even greater destruction and desolation for mankind, which that's prophetically true. Um, Destruction and desolation is coming, but this this nigga is juiced in. All right, the, the spirit of Yahweh Hashem ain't dealing with this nigga. All right, so we dealt with the religion. All right, now let's deal with the last one, which is the military. All right, again, this is the trinity of a globalist stranglehold. All right, we dealt with the finance, we dealt with the religion. Now we're gonna deal with the military. All right, so, you know, this is a list from wonderslist.com. Just going over the, you know, top, what's that, 10? All right, these are the top 10 most powerful militaries in the world, 2022. And we're just going to go through the list. You got Brazil. Okay. You got number nine, Pakistan. Number eight, the United Kingdom. Number seven, France. Number six, South Korea. Number five, Japan. Number four, India. Number three, China. Number two, Russia. And number one, Babylon the Great herself, the United States. Number one in the world. So We've addressed um, the world's financial, the world's uh, financial stronghold comes out of London. The world's religious stronghold comes out of uh, Rome, Italy. And then the, the world's military stronghold comes out of the United States. All right. Um, Washington, to be more specific. Then I got another one here, another website, military.com, the top 10 militaries of the world. Now, this is from 2017. Got the UK on there. Hold up. That's it. Show full article. Okay, you got Germany. Now, this is 2017. You got Italy, France, South Korea, Japan, India, China, Russia. In the United States, so the United States, Russia, China, and, and India have been top four for some years now. But yep, so there you got it. These are your three unclean spirits, because right, these are the, pretty much the three pillars uh, within Esau's kingdom. All right, and they're all a part of the beast. You got the United States, you got the UK, uh, and you got you got fucking um, in Italy. All right, so Revelation 16, 13, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to touch on, man, the three unclean spirits. Uh, Lord willing, this was edifying, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Shalom.